Hey guys, thanks for joining us. I'm here with Pam this week, uh, and we actually decided to stay in Rick's office because yes. things were already set up, so we made it a little easier on ourselves. But we're glad you're joining us. We want to start off with an icebreaker. So would you like to do the honors? I would love okay. to. Right All right. On. I hope it's a good one. I'm really bad at these. I kind of struggle with these. Do you ever have a hard time with them? No, never. Never. Okay. I didn't think so. All right. Let's see. Okay. This is a big one. We have mm -hmm. many examples. Yeah. All right. Tell about a time you played a joke on someone. Oh, wow. So like a practical joke okay. or a prank. This is confession time. Like. <laughs> All right. So I think one of my all-time favorites, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there was... Uh, all right, when, we, when the youth would go on mission trips, yes, there is a song that we did a drama to mm -hmm. called Guard Your Heart. And uh, yes. the, <laughs> the just, song, I had to do that. if you've never heard it, you got to go, you you go look it up. It. But the song gets stuck in your head. Mm -hmm. Something I learned early on was that Kibbit would get annoyed when this song would get stuck in his head. Yes. It's not that he hates the song. He just hates that it gets stuck in his head. So all the time, <laughs> then the joke would go that, you know, I'd, hey, guard your heart. Like, and, and then it would be stuck in your head yes, for another yes, week. Yes. Yep. So there was a time when we had gotten back from a mission trip and Kivit was having his bookshelves painted and mm -hmm. all of his books were stacked in my office. And uh, a couple, three or four students. Not going to name them. No, no. For safety, you know. Yeah, to protect their identity. Yeah. Um, but a few students <laughs> and I, we decided to put pieces of paper like we're talking like, I don't know, 300 pieces of paper in different random books that just say <laughs> guard your heart so that whenever he's reading randomly, these letters like, you know, these notes fall <laughs> out and then all of a sudden it's in his head it's like, it's like, and it's the best thing ever. I mean, that was three years ago and he's still finding them. I found, I saw yeah. one a couple months ago on his desk and I was like, oh my word. So that yeah. is like the gift that keeps on giving. And I, I think know. that is one of the best. I've borrowed, I borrowed a book from his office, one of <laughs> Hillary's books, and I found it inside there, which I then, of course, That's I just sent a picture to Kim. Oh, yeah, and, you absolutely. Know, when he finds one, you know, mm -hmm. he, he makes sure. So that, be sure to say yes, something to him, too. Just, just yeah. walk up to him and say, guard your heart, or just do this. <laughs> he'll, know, he'll know what that means. <laughs> so we, do a lot, we apparently do lots of... Um, pranks and practical oh, yeah. jokes here, you know, together. We just like to have fun together. So I think of whenever there is somebody's birthday mm -hmm. and they are not in the office, um, we like to surprise them oh, yeah. um, with something. I think the last one we did was filling the office with balloons. And then we found some confetti mm -hmm. and filled a couple with water because yeah. that was, yeah, because that would Obviously. be the logical thing oh, to do. Great. So that was fun. That <laughs> so was also kidding. Have, oh, yeah. That was the... <laughs> Now, now yeah, I feel I like, like we should probably the only examples we've given people. are there have been other pranks I'm sure too. But yeah. yeah, we have those are the highlights. Though. Oh, yeah. my favorite. We'll take yeah. some time now to talk about with your group a time that you put a joke on someone. All right, so this week, as Pastor Rick was preaching, um, he was kind of reviewing and recapping the past sermon that Pastor Rick had pre preached, which is, mm -hmm. blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And just right. kind of, there's so much in that beatitude that we just needed to dive into it a little bit mm -hmm. deeper. Um, and then Pastor Rick kind of reviewed how Pastor Kivit gave one of the best definitions of mercy that he's ever right. heard, which is mercy, showing mercy is compassion with a redemptive action. Mm -hmm. And I've really like, it's been interesting as I've reflected on that for the past week and yeah. just kind of, we dove into the practical side of it, you know, this, this week. Oh yeah, absolutely. So with thinking about this, again, diving into what does that mercy look like? How do we show compassion? and that uh, redemptive action in the same sense. Mm -hmm. Pastor Rick focused really on two areas. He looked at them, the physical needs and spiritual needs of people. Mm -hmm. And what he talked about was the physical needs are very visible. He gives the, uh, he used the story of Jesus healing the paralyzed man and he, he talks about, okay, is it easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or take up your bed and walk? And so in that, okay, the physical needs are more easily visible to us, yeah. and so they're a little easier to meet. But as he talked about it, he talked about our physical and emotional needs, we often hide from one another. And so our mm -hmm. question we want to start off with is, 
why do we hide our spiritual and emotional needs from one another? It's one of those things where we're supposed to be able to help each other and come mm-hmm. alongside each other and in our community and in our, um, you know, that care and love for one another, we're supposed to be able to build each other up. And yet when we hide that, we really deprive ourselves of that opportunity. So we wanted to talk about this more as a group. Um, and why don't you take some time now and talk about this. Why do we hide our spiritual and emotional needs from one another? Well, as Pastor Rick kind of kept moving through the sermon, he, he actually looked at this other passage, 1 mm-hmm. Thessalonians 5, 14 through 15, uh, and it kind of gives some specific examples of groups of people to yeah. kind of encourage and how to support them, how to help them. Um, and so we kind of looked at that and then also saw there is that, again, the compassion with that redemptive action mm-hmm. then. Yeah, and so he pulled out the three types of people that were listed um, in 1 Thessalonians. And the first was to you have admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, and then help the weak. And as you do, kind of define what each of those groups kind of were facing, mm-hmm. um, there was a very specific action that right. you would then, a you know, redemptive action, to really show mercy to these people. Yeah. So as we talk about in our everyday lives, you don't have to talk about Mm -hmm. each one of these, but thinking of these, what is one way? How can we show compassion with redemptive action for the spiritual and emotional needs of others? Talk about this with your group. All right, so I, as you guys have maybe had some discussion and talked about some specific ways that you can show that compassion with redemptive action, our next and final question is, um, what are the challenges mm. we are going to face when we show mercy to others? At the end of the, the passage in 1 Thessalonians, it talked about showing patience, you mm-hmm. know, and showing good to all. And so what are some specific challenges that we're going to have to face when we show mercy to others. So take some time and discuss that with your group. Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of The Pursuit. For any uh, previous episodes of The Pursuit, you can check them out on our YouTube channel. Yeah, you can also watch past sermon videos, especially in our Beatitude series. You don't want to miss those. Uh, And you can also subscribe. Hit the subscribe button to our channel so you get those automatically. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.